Hello and welcome to week seven. This is our final week of class and we trust that the class has been enjoyable for you, that you've learned some things and that you, uh, your ministry will be enhanced because of what we've discussed and what you've been able to interact with, not just in the reading and in the lectures, but also in the projects uh, that you've been able to complete. As we begin week seven, you certainly have completed and submitted your ministry evaluation project and hopefully that was helpful to you to be able to not just look at a ministry with a critical eye uh, but also to be able to be able to find strengths and weaknesses uh, and that'll be critical as you uh, are deep, more deeply involved in your ministry or as you look to uh, get involved uh, in your own ministry soon. Your leadership profile project has been submitted as well, or we, at least we hope it has. It was due this past weekend, and we trust that that was a project that you also enjoyed. I felt like that was a great book, and that book was one which I felt uh, described many different leadership styles and did so uh, with great detail and with a visual illustration and description. And as a children's pastor, I like that. I tried to do that myself. And so when I find a, a resource that also uh, uses that same imagery, it speaks to me and I hope it spoke to you as well. And you were able to identify your leadership styles. And again, hopefully you can take that information and be able to know what you need to work on, the type of people that you need to engage to complement you in your leadership ministry efforts. Now it's time for your final exam. This is week number seven. Uh, you do have some discussion, por discussion posts uh, still due this week, so don't forget those. Uh, but since this is week seven, then you will find uh, on week seven, you will find the, uh, the exam. Go to weekly assignments and you can drop down and you can find how to access the exam and also some detail about what I expect and the information, uh, how it needs to come to me. And of course, one of the main things to look for is the deadline. Uh, the end of week number seven, which is technically Monday, uh, is typically when professors have all, have all information due. I'm going to extend that to Wednesday of next week. And so your final exam is due absolutely no later than Wednesday of the week following uh, week number seven, which is this week. So please note that, and you'll find those details there on your weekly assignment page as well. Okay, uh, what I'd like to do with this lecture, being the final one, is I'd like for it to be one which is very practical. We've talked about philosophy, we've talked about theory, uh, we've talked uh, in generalities some and some specifics, but this lecture I would like to kind of discuss where the rubber meets the road. Uh, I would like for you, if you wouldn't mind, uh, to kind of look over my shoulder and first of all I have a couple of disclaimers. Number one, um, I'm always learning. Uh, I have not cornered the market on the most effective way to do children's ministry. I'm the first to realize that. And every day I learn, and every week I learn, in networking and studying and keeping my ear to the ground uh, as far as what things are out there and how to best effectively reach children is a goal that I constantly have, and you must have that goal in your ministry as well. So keep that in mind. In no way am I going to show you these things and want you to feel like that if you don't do it this way that you're wrong. Uh, I am constantly adapting. But what I'd like to do is I'd like for you to, to kind of come behind the curtain with me and look over my shoulder and, and I'd like to show you some things that, that I have found to be very effective in children's ministry. Um, some software that I use, uh, some organizational tools that I use. Um, and the second disclaimer I'd like to, to give is this. I, in no way am I trying to overwhelm you or to discourage you. Many of what 
much of what you see uh, will be years worth of, of work. Uh, and again, not perfect work, but uh, I started at a point. And to be honest with you, um, when I started, I didn't have a class like this to take. I wasn't able to look over the shoulder of someone who had spent two or three decades in children's ministry. And so what I'd like to do now that we have spent several weeks looking at different facets of children's ministry, I would like, again, for you to just look over my shoulder and see some of the things that I have found to be very effective. Um, so here we go. Uh, the good thing about this lecture, too, is you, you won't need to see my face much. This will be all you'll see, really, of me, except maybe at the very end. Uh, there is a piece of software, it's called Camtasia, that I use, uh, and in just a moment you won't see my face, but you will see the screenshot of my computer. And so that will allow you to see what I see um, and certainly be much more effective to understanding the behind the scenes look that we're about to take for the next few minutes, okay? All right, so buckle up and uh, certainly take notes as you have each lecture, but let's uh, forge ahead and we'll start by taking a look at, at my computer. Okay, this is my desktop. It is a Mac. Uh, if you have a PC, that's okay. The vast majority of what I show you today is also PC compatible as well. Um, and what I'd like to do is to, first of all, point you to, to what I call the holy grail of files. Two files that I literally work in every single week. And these were created years and years ago but it's like building a snowman, okay? You build a snowman one handful of snow at a time, and you just handful after handful and create the base, and then create the middle. Uh, you can't do it with one handful. It takes time. It takes effort. And so once again, as I mentioned earlier in the intro piece, uh, don't be discouraged when you see how vast uh, this particular uh, diary of information is. I think we need to put everything we can and have into our ministry. And when we do that, I think a close second priority needs to be to keep track of what we do so that one of two things doesn't happen. Okay, and let me start by going into Microsoft Excel. Both of these are Excel, or excuse me, Microsoft Office programs. You may be familiar with Excel. If not, get familiar with it because it's a great, great tool. Uh, and it can really help you to structure what you're doing. And, of course, this is my diary of what I use in children's ministry week after week after week. Uh, let's start with uh, a tab down here that says Master Schedule. Master Schedule is really a, a resource page that allows me to enter every single song that we do in children's ministry alphabetically. And if you look up here, uh, you see above all, absolutely nothing, Agnes Day, all the way down. That's alphabetical, okay? And then over here to the right, I've actually frozen it here, so uh, as I look this way, uh, my song stays the same, so I can still see what's over here, but yet these are my, my date columns, meaning that, for instance, uh, October the 9th, actually 2016, uh, it shows you the songs uh, that that I uh, basic, oh yes, October the 9th, my songs that I chose for Children's Church that day. Every move I make, uh, everybody ought to know, in this case they're, they're, they're color-coded. Blue are the ones that I have soundtrack music to, and I will get to that in a moment. And then red is my keyboard songs, um, and then uh, it allows me to keep track of, of the songs and keeps me from getting in one of two predicaments. First of all, without this, uh, there are songs that are excellent that I would be apt to do too often. And of course, I can look as I prepare for the next Sunday and see how, how long it's been since I've done that song. Uh, the other thing that doing this allows me to do is it keeps me from uh, keeps me from overusing the song and it also from underusing the song. As you know, children's ministry 
Uh, the kids rotate out, and so instead of thinking that everything has to be new and you can't repeat something that you did some time ago, I think just giving that diversity uh, and uh, changing the scenery uh, is excellent, but also not forgetting what was effective way back that you can reuse. And so a program like Excel and working it so that you can see how long it's been since you've done a particular song uh, is extremely, extremely helpful. Okay, And then uh, if you think through that, uh, songs isn't your only uh, isn't the only thing that I put in here. Actually, I have another area down below. I've separated out my patriotic music over here to your left, my Easter music, and again, that would be songs that I do exclusively at Easter. There's no use digging through it up here. I can come down through here seasonally and find out the songs that I have to pull from. And of course, you can see here that that's what happened. I picked songs around Easter that are exclusively Easter songs. Same thing here with Christmas. Uh, VBS, these are our VBS theme songs that we've used throughout the years. Um, and then down below, uh, I have added some other elements of our worship service, which also gives me the chance to keep track uh, and keep a diary of that. We do a countdown at the beginning of every children's church service. And I would encourage you to highly to consider that. Uh, when you do a countdown, and there are many countdowns that are available, as you can see, I've collected literally dozens and dozens through the years. And uh, those particular countdowns, I, 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 I do them periodically, and I, I will repeat them from time to time, but typically not in uh, you know one year to the next, but no more often than that. Um, and it allows the kids with a darkened room uh, to know and uh, that, that worship is coming. And if you are ready to go when the clock strikes zero, then it will be a routine that the kids can get into. And so, uh, again, you can see there are lots of countdowns that I've collected through the years, and we use countdowns, I, I would think, quite effectively as well. Uh, and it's something that our kids look forward to and prepares, I believe, their hearts uh, for worship. doesn't mean that all of them are spiritual related, but it does mean that we're working toward uh, ground zero, if you will, as far as time is concerned. Okay? Uh, what else have we used through the years? As soon as my computer catches up, I'll, I'll go back up and show you what I'm talking about. Uh, we've also used um, for games. Uh, we have games that we do. Uh, quite often we'll do a a fun game at the end of the service and and we'll actually choose our children uh, using different methods if you can see here on the video child selection formats um, there are different ways that we use uh, to select children to play and then our games here uh, are are ones that we also keep track of uh, and uh, it's it's helpful to be able to again keep track of those as well our worship videos even before the countdown we do worship videos that the kids can as they're as they're coming in early there's always something going on and and again plugging that gap and being able uh, to uh, prepare their hearts for the service I believe is critical okay now this goes way way back uh, and I, I often don't look way far back but at the same time the information is there and so that is really kind of the master schedule how does that relate to uh, the weekly service. Well, if you take a look here, uh, most of the tabs at the bottom are, are, are labeled by the date. That's a Sunday. And what it does is it creates uh, an order of service that we go by. Uh, once again, you can kind of follow what I have come to uh, you know, create as a custom format here. Um, we have a countdown, a welcome, we have an opening song and a prayer. Uh, we always give the worship rules. We'll talk about the game right after that because quite often uh, we're watching behavior and enforcing the rules right before you talk about the game uh, is very helpful in reinforcing the fact that uh, at the end of the service down here, we're going to select based on that behavior much of the time, and it helps to reinforce the fact that we want them to be on their best behavior during the service. Uh, some songs, we do birthday uh, and then some more songs, offertory prayer, 
uh, song during the offering, obviously a calmer song. You don't want the money flying around. Uh, and then we go into our lesson. Okay, so this particular order of service is custom uh, every single Sunday, and you can go back uh, as far back as you want. And once again, uh, there is uh, that particular page for that service. We also involve our children. I think we talked uh, several lectures ago about allowing our children to get involved in service. Uh, just so you know, these are these are actually on the order of service, so the kids, uh, I can call the names of the kids and they can come up and help. These four children here, uh, they're going to come up and help during that song. Uh, opening prayer, we have two services, and so the two people that are going to open in prayer are listed here. Uh, offertory prayer the same way, uh, and then the ushers are listed here. This is actually the one who reads the scripture, and then there's a pastor's helper. This does not include all of our helpers in children's church because there are others, uh, camera operators, laptop operators, laser pointers, that I literally have other workers to remind and fill those spots because it's not something I want to have to deal with uh, during the service. So again, you can see uh, kind of behind the scenes as to what our order of service looks like. Okay, what else do we have here? Um, this is our seal sheet. This is a, an, a very important sheet that goes into our newsletter every single month. And as children fill out their servant survey, they turn it in, and then I actually go to this page. I'll come back to the seal, uh, the seal sheet in just a moment. But this is a page that I've also created. Uh, it's similar to the one that I showed you earlier, the master schedule, except this particular page um, lists all of the children, and this is our 9 o'clock service and then our 1030 service, all of the children who have filled out a survey for helping in the 9 o'clock service. Okay? And if you, I'm going to try to enlarge this just a little bit so you can see it maybe a little bit better. Uh, but when you, here's the servant preferences. And so I have little codes, little two letter code codes that I know because I've used them through the years. Uh, let me go to one that's rather lengthy here. This one here, uh, Quincy Haltom. Um, he, he put an usher as his first preference, a greeter as his second. Song, leading in songs, pledges, and a pastor helper. And what I'll do is I'll come in here each month and I'll I'll create uh, a four or five column edition and color code it differently because as you come back this way, uh, you'll see that uh, the color codes help me to keep the month straight. But then I will literally populate um, this particular field or this particular month based upon the preferences. And over here I keep track so I make sure I've filled all the positions. I'll literally uh, turn these away, not uh, off of green, turn this off of green, and once I've placed people and I know that everyone has at least one chance to serve and my spots are filled, my work is done. Okay? So these are my four song helpers, my four ushers, my two laser pointers, my two people who pray, and pastors, helpers, and then once a month we do our pledges. And of course, this is the third week, and you can see here pledge, pledge, and pledge. Okay? And so I can promise you it takes some time to do this. And it's well worth it because it uh, allows our children to get involved. Our second service is our older children, so there are more children involved. And you can see, let me back it back to 100. 25% a little bit, uh, you can see that, that more children are involved. So it does take a longer time uh, to literally assign people uh, responsibilities. But it's the same principle. These are all of the ways that they can serve. And let's look at this one. Uh, uh, laptop operator, greeter, usher, uh, song helper, uh, laser pointer, uh, tear down person, stack chairs, pray, help with the lighting, computer operator, pledge, and pastor's helper. Okay, And again, all of those 
uh, ways to help um, don't have to be in, in your opportunities for your children. We have just created as many opportunities as possible. And then once again, uh, let me give you an example. This person here, Cala Flood, she did not put prayer on her list. And so we will not ask her to pray. We want her to do things that she's comfortable with. However, we will take and apply uh, her choices and give her as much variety as possible, helping in a different way each month. Once those are populated, uh, then I simply take this information, and I'll go down here to October, and then we transfer that uh, to this particular sheet. As you know in Excel, you can copy to a other page and, and, and very simply recreate this sheet, uh, custom to the month, take all this out, change the the dates for that particular month and then just starting start to put that information in and when you're done with this sheet uh, it's ready uh, to be turned into a PDF uh, to print uh, to email out and uh, also uh, it's just a great great way uh, to get your kids involved in ministry okay all right let's take a look at uh, something else here um, and lesson diary uh, all the way back uh, and again some of this is not populated but you can see uh, that I have actually through the years uh, tried to keep track of, of the lessons that are done in children's church and again it's very easy to, to do you have a date field here and you have specific uh, title of your lesson type of lesson and how effective it was, some notes, and so it's just an excellent way uh, that you can keep track uh, of, of what you're doing. So again, you don't repeat it too often and you don't forget about something that was effective uh, through the years, okay? So uh, Excel is a fantastic uh, tool. It's a great piece of software um, and I want you to know that if you'll get used to it, you can use it uh, in a very strong way to organize what you're doing in children's ministry. Okay. Now let's uh, let's take a look at uh, the other piece of software that I use that you may use also, and it's PowerPoint. PowerPoint is a fantastic presentation tool. Uh, PowerPoint is has evolved through the years, and there are certainly other forms of presentation software like Media Shout and Keynote, uh, and all those are great, but I, I, have, I continue to stick with PowerPoint. Why? Uh, because PowerPoint uh, works for me, and it allows me to use a piece of software where my children, my fifth graders, can easily, easily operate it. Okay? PowerPoint is a, a great presentation piece of software that allows you to uh, create slides, uh, of course even find slides that are already in PowerPoint, project them on the screen, uh, and not only that, but you're able to also, if you would like, embed music and video into this particular uh, piece of software. Now, this is my Master Kids Church Songs internal file, and this particular file is one that I have created over the years and I'll get to the end so you can see what I'm talking about as I scroll down through all the way to the end uh, you can see that this particular piece of uh, this file has over 2300 slides and it is a rather large file because again I have embedded uh, audio into many of these slides uh, but What's cool about this uh, is, is it is a, a file that literally matches up. Let me use my Moom to move it over uh, to one side. Uh, open up my Excel again uh, and go to my master schedule. And then uh, what's cool about this is uh, this particular uh, tab here, this page, is, is basically... Uh, my index. Uh, these are my songs and again these are my slide numbers and so 
uh, if I'm looking for uh, on the board with the Lord, it's going to be slides number 2014 to 2022. And so I would scroll down and turn the page, if you will, in the songbook uh, to uh, that particular page number. And if I go to 2014, uh, you can see right here uh, that um, if I double click there, that's the first page to On the Board with the Lord. And as I create my order of service from here, um, then I would literally copy this song, these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine slides over to another file and literally create uh, a, a file that is custom to that particular Sunday. Uh, let me show you what I mean. Because as I uh, minimize that and then open up uh, in just a moment, uh, October the 9th, then you will see that that particular file is made up of, of songs that have been copied from my master file. Oh boy, I just opened that same file. Hold on a minute. Um, let's go to 10.9. The reason why it's a little slow here again is because that file is so large. But if I go to the 10.9 file, uh, you see right away that this particular file uh, matches up with my 10.9 here at the bottom on my Excel file, okay? And so my slide numbers are here, um, and as, as we walk through the service, if you will, uh, for the most part, my fifth graders simply step through, and instead of having to work through a huge file, it's almost like I take my huge songbooks, tear out the pages, create a custom songbook, so then it's very easy to follow and it's very simple to operate when it comes time for uh, my service time. So that's how uh, we've been able to use uh, PowerPoint uh, week after week, uh, keeping track of, 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 of everything that we do here in the Excel software, uh, but then also uh, have a huge master file uh, that we can kind of pull from. And as I get songs, new songs, and create uh, new songs, uh, slides, then I simply add that to my master file. I would also add it to my Excel file. And then again, it allows me to expand uh, the tools that I have to use uh, so that then I can stay current uh, and I can... Uh, again, be able to, to, to be cutting edge, but yet not lose sight of songs that we've done in the past and keep that variety uh, going forward. So hopefully you understand uh, how we use it. Um, I will say this, we have PowerPoint files uh, that also uh, are game related, uh, that I keep stocked in the cloud, uh, on, in Dropbox. And I have a, a, as I get a game that works, once again, I keep track of it uh, here in my uh, Excel spreadsheet, uh, and then I'm able to go get it and then uh, use it uh, the same way that I do the songs. Let me show you another couple of ways that I have used Excel. Uh, we have uh, a, a large nursery ministry, and if you have a difficult time keeping track of uh, your scheduling, then Excel is a, is a fantastic way to do that. Uh, this is really kind of custom to us, but you can see that it's easy to create columns and, and, uh, and, and rows that, that match your particular setting, um, and then you're able to, uh, over here to the right, I actually keep track of all of my contacts that I'm making. When someone comes off the schedule, and they're off for a short time, I, I continue to keep a string on them. I know, I know my memory is limited, but I know if I keep track of those people, uh, then uh, and I plant seed, then I'm able to reap a harvest when it comes time to replace or to fill particular uh, positions. That's our nursery preschool schedule. Uh, we also have our Kid Street ministry that we do the same way. Um, and again, it's a file that I use often. I'm able to see who's 
scheduled to serve which Sunday um, and which service they help with um, and keep things uh, populated and um, this schedule of course very simply simply select it and uh, set your print area and then you can save that as a PDF and send it uh, out uh, to the people that need to get that particular schedule especially if it is uh, edited and changed and updated okay all right some awesome ways to use Excel and I'm sure that you probably even know more and I'd be very interested uh, in hearing about those because it is a very very powerful powerful program um, I also use iMovie many of you uh, that's actually the first part of my uh, <laughs> my lecture here where you can video yourself uh, and then of course what I'm going to do at the end of this lecture is I'm going to take uh, the the video that's created from Camtasia and add it to the end of this and then you will be able to uh, see the entire movie if you will lecture that has me at the front where I created that in iMovie and then again I'll piece together here toward the end uh, the um, Camtasia video which will include the uh, computer screen version okay all right what else do we have to look at iTunes. Uh, many of you have iTunes if you have a Mac or maybe you have the, the Windows version, but iTunes are a wonderful way uh, to collect music and uh, be able to stock that away and store that um, in a way that uh, you can use as background music, um, use it to edit music. Um, I actually use WavePad as my audio editing software. And it's a, it's a great little tool uh, that, that you can purchase. It's not very expensive. And actually, there are even free audio software programs that are out there. And uh, it's, it's really, really interesting how you can uh, edit your music. You can ramp in and ramp out. Uh, you can do clips and snippets and things. And... And so don't discount the fact that you're able to do some really cool things. Uh, get into WavePad and play around, and I think you'll find out uh, that it can be a, a tremendous tool. Okay? Um, let me see what else we got here. A PDF Studio is a great tool. Uh, many of you create PDFs because it's kind of the standard for uh, sharing information that really isn't intended to be editable. But PDF Studio gives you actually... Uh, some editing capabilities which can be extremely helpful um, where you can uh, insert uh, different pages and create a PDF of multiple uh, pages. Uh, you can do lots of things with PDF Studio. Uh, it's opening now, a little bit slow, but once it comes up you'll be able to, you'll be able to see uh, what uh, PDF Studio uh, can do. Um, I use it a lot. I use it a lot and uh, it's, it's very helpful. We always, uh, whenever we do our newsletter, we have both a parent and a child newsletter that we do each month. Um, and if you like, you can go to uh, tbcnow.org and drill down to Kid Street, and you can find both PDF versions, the current versions, and also archive versions that go back about a year. And so uh, a lot of that is done through PDF once I get my publisher file uh, complete. Okay, well, it's a little slow now, but I know the feeling. What else do we have? Um, image size reducer. Uh, here comes PDF Studio. Many times when you collect pictures, and I encourage you to collect pictures within your your ministry. Uh, it's interesting. It's it's a lot like uh, putting everything into programming and then not being able to keep track of it, uh, like we like I do with with that Excel diary file. Well, the same thing happens with pictures. Uh, we go to all this effort and we don't take the time to take pictures, which can really go a long way to representing our ministry, promoting our ministry, and parents love to see their kids engaged and involved. And so as you take pictures, uh, if you have a good camera, they're going to be large. And Image Size Reducer uh, is, a, is a cool little program I've used for years that allows you to reduce the size of images in a batch way 
uh, you can do it one by one. You simply uh, add image to convert and you go find that image and it'll let you do it one at a time. Uh, the one I use more than often uh, is, and here's where it wants me to go get that picture, is the add folder. You can do a whole folder. Once you select it, you come over here and you set how how small you want that picture to be as far as uh, uh, a data is concerned. Many pictures are many, many megabytes. And if you don't reduce the size, then it's going to take up your storage quickly and be very hard uh, to transmit uh, and things like that. Okay. What else do we have? Um, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. I use Dropbox and also use Google Drive. I, I, there are pros and cons of both, and uh, I, I think that both can be a, a great uh, cloud-based solution. Uh, and of course, if you're using audio and certainly video, then uh, your external hard drive is going to get full pretty quickly, and it's also going to affect the performance of your machine. So, so keep that in mind that you really... Uh, need to uh, have a cloud-based solution uh, if at all possible. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, you have seen kind of behind the scenes at some tools that I have used over the years and whether you currently use those tools or will explore the possibility of using the tools that are out there, I do believe it can help enhance your ministry and certainly create an appeal uh, and allow you to organize and structure uh, your ministry uh, to the best that it possibly can be structured. Once again, thank you again for this class. Thank you for attending. It's been a pleasure having you all a part of this class. I wish you the best on the exam, and if you need me for anything, don't hesitate to email. God bless.